Welcome to another episode of 7 Minutes Medicine. Today we're going to talk about the management of acute liver failure. Please check our other lecture about the diagnosis of acute liver failure. The general guidelines for management, we have to maintain perfusion because those patients tend to have a low blood pressure and this result in further damage. We need also to prevent bleeding because they have bleeding the thesis. We have to prevent infection because it's going to worsen the whole situation and they are immunodeficient and we have to provide nutritional support. We're going to talk about the rule of n acetylcysteine and we have also to prevent the most important thing encephalopathy and we have to manage the underlying disease. So we will talk about managing uh, perfusion. We have to maintain mean arterial pressure above 75 or the cerebral perfusion at least 50 and to do that we might need to give some IV fluid if the patient is volume depleted while the normal saline you might add bicarb if there is acidosis and you might add dextrose if there is hypoglycemia but the most important thing to avoid overhydration because it can result in cerebral edema if you are not able to support the pressure with the fluid only, you can give oppressors, and the most preferred one is the norepinephrine because it can cause less tachycardia and has very good control. You may add vasopressin. Trial of hydrocortisone is reasonable, especially if the pressors are not doing the trick. The second thing we have to focus on bleeding prevention, and we we do not and no one recommended to use a prophylactic FFP if there is no active bleeding because this is a common question you will have in your clinical practice and using the protonics is recommended to prevent any GI bleeding. Infection and prevention uh, so those patients are at high risk of infection especially fungal so there is controversial uh, argument about the use of the routine urine, sputum, blood cultures, and chest x-ray. Some uh, experts say yes, some others say no. But generally speaking, you have to be very cautious in those patients, and you have to have low threshold to investigate for infection, and you might need to add some IV antibiotics if you have a suspect of infection because it's very dangerous. Nutritional support, we highly recommend uh, early nutritional support because uh, it will result in decrease the risk of GI bleeding. And if you have encephalopathy, grade 1 or grade 2, oral feeding can, can, can happen, no problem with that. But if you have encephalopathy, grade 3 and 4, then probably uh, enteral feeding is a better option. Check our uh, lecture about uh, hepatic encephalopathy. And acetylcysteine, it is very well known to be used in uh, acetaminophen toxicity, and it can be considered in any acute liver failure patient. Uh, it is helpful uh, in early encephalopathy to prevent a deterioration of the patient, and the dosing you start by giving a high dose bolus first, and then you continue by IV infusion. Sedation. Try to avoid sedation at all in hepatic uh, failure. The reason is because it can decrease the threshold of seizure because they are at risk of seizure, as we're going to see. And it's very hard to get rid of them once you don't need them because the liver is not working. So try to avoid it. Try to avoid also nephrotoxic medication like an steroidal. Always correct the electrolyte uh, disturbances and you have to be very cautious, especially the hypokalemia, because hypokalemia is associated with mortality in those patients. For the hepatic encephalopathy, and this is one of the most important things, because uh, you have to be very cautious and you have to examine your patient probably many times a day to make sure there is no signs of cerebral edema. 
like hypertension with the bradycardia, like the Cushing uh, reflex. If there's uh, hyperreflexia, increase uh, muscular tone. And if you check our lecture about hepatic encephalopathy, there is many ways to assess hepatic encephalopathy. The most important thing, if you suspect that, then probably you have to uh, always you the patient should be on lactulose, uh, and you might need to give the lactulose enteral if the patient is not able to eat and drink because of the level of consciousness or um, enema. Elevate the bed, maintain the sodium with 145 to 150. You might need to use hypertonic saline, hyperventilation, mannitol, and phenobarbital. Those are measures for the decreasing the intracerebral pressure. Because if you decrease the intracerebral pressure, this will result in a better uh, perfusion for the brain. Uh, seizure, it's common, subclinical seizure. So some experts recommended hooking the patient to EEG machine uh, to record that kind of seizure. And it's related to the IC. So the most important thing in the management of acute liver failure is to uh, try to stabilize your patient first, then you have to manage the underlying disease. For example, in the acetaminophen, you give an acetylcysteine. In viral hepatitis, you give antiviral therapy. Mushroom poisoning, early activated charcoal if you can. But carry syndrome, thrombolysis. Uh, herpes simplex virus, cyclovir, IV probably. And we also need to see is uh, plasma exchange as a temporizing measure. Autoimmune hepatitis, you might give steroid. And acute fatty liver or pregnancy, then delivery. So, and when we talk about acute liver failure, prognosis is the, one of the most important questions. And uh, the, the thing is, if the patient has advanced encephalopathy, then the prognosis is, is generally very poor. And you have to talk to the transplant center around your area as soon as possible. One of the ways to assess if the patient qualifies for liver transplant on the acute settings is the King's College criteria. And I also have the criteria right here. Uh, it is related to the evidence of end organ damage. And it is differentiating between the acetaminophen and the non-acetaminophen acute liver injury. So if the non-acetaminophen MILD score more than 32 or PT more than 100, which is simple, but if it goes to the acetaminophen, either the pH is than 7.3 or a combination of PT more than 100 and the grade 4 or 3 encephalopathy and creatinine more than 3.4. So the bottom line, please talk to the transplant center as soon as possible, especially if you have encephalopathy. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our lecture. Please subscribe to our channel so we can provide more lectures. Thank you.